Hey guys, um, it's been a while since I've been on here and one of you had commented that I should post more. Um, in the past month it's been, well life has been crazy and um, not ready to share some of the news yet, but it's very exciting, it's all good things. Um, but just the past month has been pretty crazy and um, when I was praying I was like, okay Lord, do you want me to do a video and I've just perceived in my spirit that I was supposed to do a video. And when I asked God what he wanted me to share with you, it was just the good news, the gospel of peace. And that's what, I'm, what I've come on here to share. So um, for everyone out there that is not yet a believer, um, maybe you've heard about Jesus a thousand times, you know, you've heard the Christmas story and um, you know, whatever your story is, maybe you've went to church once with your grandmother when you were younger, or hey, maybe you've never been to church, um, and you just, you know, all you know about Jesus and Christianity is, you know, what what you see on the news or what you see like in culture, and um, unfortunately, the ones with the loudest microphones are usually the ones. Um, uh, spouting what they're against instead of what they're for and what is this gospel? What is the gospel of peace? Um, and I just wanted to come on here and share that good simple truth that um, first of all you are loved. You are passionately loved by God so much. Um, the Bible says that even while we were sinners Christ died for us. Um, and why did he die for us? Why did Jesus, the Son of God, need to die for us, want to die for us? Because of sin. And we all know that we have sinned. Like if we are truly honest with ourselves, like we have at some point in our lives um, transgressed against, the, against God. Um, and whether you believe in God or not, like we've all broken one of the Ten Commandments. Um, at some point in our lives, we've stolen, we've told a little white lie, you know, we've been dishonest, maybe we've um, been jealous or coveted what our neighbors had, um, you know, whether it's material items or whether it's lusting after someone. Uh, Jesus said that even if we look upon another person in lust, that that is considered um, adultery, that that's a sin. And um, so we've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. Like we have all fallen short of perfection. And God loves us so much that he was willing to pay the price for our sins. The wages of sin is death. And um, God, uh, in, in his great love for us, wanted to redeem us. He wanted to buy us back. He wanted to pay the fine for us. He wanted to um, set us free from condemnation. Those who are in Christ are free from all condemnation. Praise God, because when Jesus died on the cross for our sins, he took, the, he took upon himself the punishment for all of humanity from eternity past to eternity future. He took, he took it all upon himself, the weight, the shame, the, the punishment that, that we deserved, all of mankind deserved, all of the sins that we've ever committed fell on him. And he willingly, willingly went to the cross and endured that, that shameful death, that painful death for us. And it's not so that God could just heap more shame on us. I had to die for you. Like, this is, this is what I had to do to set you free. It's, no, it's because he, like, he wanted the, to pay the price for our sins. The Bible says to literally separate us from our sins as far as the east is from the west. Just picture that for a moment. What does that look like even as far as the east is from the west? That means just to separate us. Like if, if one thing keeps going east and the other thing keeps going west, two opposite directions, and they do that for all eternity. Like it's, it, there's no end to it. 
that means he has separate, like he, his desire is to remove our shame, to wash our robes clean, to completely give us a new blank slate, just a new start. The Bible says his mercies are new every morning. It is for freedom Christ has set us free. So, friends, um, if you're just, if, if you feel that tug in your heart and, and you want a new beginning, you want to be a new creation, you want to be set free from all guilt, all shame, all condemnation, everything that you've ever done wrong in your life, like, or ever, it, you just want, etern it's, it's not just about eternal life. Yes, I mean, it's so much about eternal life, but it's about today. It's about starting eternity today, brand new. So I just encourage you, to accept Jesus into your life. And it's so simple. Like literally all you have to do is just to say, Jesus, I accept you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died on the cross to pay the debts for my sin. You paid for my sins. You atoned for me. And I believe that on the third day that you rose again, that you are alive. And just, I want you to be Lord over my life and my heart. I accept you into my heart, Jesus. And that's it. That's, that's when it begins. And it is by faith, by faith in Jesus that you are set free. That's grace. That is a gift. Like salvation is a gift. It cannot be earned. You cannot earn, earn it yourself. It's, um, so... Yes, that's, that's the gospel of peace. That's the prince of peace just rescuing us, chasing us down, and just making us new. Um, and I also just flipped open my Bible and <laughs> asked God like, if there's any scripture that he wanted to share alongside that. And I just perceived in my spirit that wherever your finger lands, and I literally landed on this. Um, this uh, Psalms chapter 31, verse 5. Free me from the net they have hidden to catch me, because you are my strength. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You will redeem me, Adonai, which means Lord, God of truth. Yes, and isn't that like just summing up the gospel beautifully? the good news of peace, what, what Jesus has done for us beautifully. He has freed us from the net that they have hidden to catch us. Like he's, free, he's freed us from the net of shame, of guilt, of sin, um, because he is our strength. And when he was on the cross, he said, into your hands I commit my spirit. He committed his spirit. That was the last thing he said before he passed away on the cross, um, and he was committing his spirit to, to his father. Um, so into your hand, I commit my spirit. You will redeem me, Adonai, God of truth. And isn't that what we do whenever we decide to trust in Jesus? Into your hand, Jesus, I commit my spirit. You will redeem me, and he has redeemed us, Adonai, God of truth. He is truth. Jesus is, he said so himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. And that's not exclusive. It's actually like incredibly inclusive. Jesus says to all who are weary, for God so loved the world, there is no one that is excluded from the call to come, come to Jesus. Everyone is invited. Everyone is invited to Jesus. What he says is that I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. That's loving because if he is the God of truth, which he is, Jesus is truth, then it's actually really loving for him to tell us the truth, to tell us how to get to the Father, how to get to eternal life, salvation, in God's presence, how to get there. That's incredibly loving. He says, this is the way. I am the way. So be encouraged and trust Jesus. He loves you so much and have a great day.